Here we go. On the road to the riches, cause it's all about the flavor. Now buckle up your seats and prepare for the journey. Let the music ease your soul, grab a spliff and start burning. Uh mm. and take a trip to the heavens and come and spend a day in the seven five seven. Hydro. <laughs> That's exactly, That's exactly what D needs. Uh, fresh out oh. of the courthouse is what Funky Monkey says. Out of the what? The courthouse? Not no, I didn't. The courthouse or the whorehouse? Uh, she said the courthouse. So, oh, I was like, I didn't do it. I promise. Yeah, I, I, thought, I, I thought I thought about it, but I didn't. Hey, to each their own. I don't see a problem with it either way. Yeah, me either. I'm just letting you know I um, didn't let do it. No, please. <laughs> How the volume is because some days uh I, I I'm playing back the shit and I'm super low of a quiz super loud. I'm super loud, a quiz super low. So we're relying on you guys live to let us know who needs to come up, who needs to go down. Um yeah. and here, yeah, he does. He does, he does, he does do concerts at his house. Doesn't who call my public defender? They're only oh, gonna pretend to defend me. Who the hell is Law Russell? That's that rapper I've been telling you about. He came out of Vallejo. He did a song with 40, and it c- turns out he got like 29 albums. He got content. I've been following him, and he got he got he got good messages, man. It's all positive vibes and good music. La so. Russell. La, La Russell. La Russell. Okay. I thought yeah. was, shouldn't he be Ed Russell if it's a dude? <laughs> I don't know. As long as it's not Jamarcus Russell, you're good. Cool. So here we are, everybody. The after show, but later, episode number two thirty-five. If I'm not mistaken, we are here live on a Thursday evening or night, depending on where you are. Um, El Kakui, was there anything that stood out to you that you want to get started with? Do you want me to get started? I have plenty. Let me know. Yeah, no, yeah. Play some of the stuff we got in those folders, man, because there's some good stuff in there. Oh, all right. And some of you have taken advantage of. Um, I'm, you know, I'm telling you guys to to call us text us whatever you know let us know if you have any ideas and um there were some people all right now i dare you call right now somebody oh you know what that's a good fucking idea dog let's all right live right we're live are we live i think we're live i'm asking are we live we are we're live okay and i, and I want to share tiktok some audio this it, it it describes the Lompoc driver i stumbled across this and tip dog you know he's here in Lompoc now and we just can't believe it um, and and I and I kind of want to take some feedback about the drivers in their towns. Let me play this TikTok. You ready? Yeah. Long oh, dude, sitting out here just driving. They can turn, bro. It's stopping traffic just to wave people so they can turn. That's not how driving works, dude. People are crazy out here on these roads, making up rules, making up rules on the road. As they go along, dude, sitting out here just driving, being like, "Oh, this person wants to turn, no problem." Stop, everyone, stop! Come on out, come on out. You can turn. That's not how it's supposed to be, dude. So now I'm sitting there with this person, stop, and they're like, "Come on, come on in," and I'm just white knuckling, like, "Okay, I guess." But now we're both in danger because you stopped traffic to let me turn. I'm glad you let me turn in, but guess what? You're the only one that gets to feel good, dude. Meanwhile, we're all out there going, what is going on out here? People don't get it, dude. If I want to turn, we both just drive. I wait for it to clear. Then I turn left. That's how driving works. Is that how driving works, D? It was a TikTok. What what was the guy talking about though? Like, about oh, you didn't hear any of it or what? I I did. I don't know. Like like like. I, I don't know. I'm lost. No, basically. So okay, I can't hear you. All of a sudden, my shit got quiet for all of a sudden. Basically, no. Al, can you hear me just fine? I can hear you just fine. Okay, now I can hear you. I don't know what. Did you adjust something? Uh. Uh-uh. Oh, okay. Well, I can hear you now. No, basically, I hear a long poke. It's crazy. Everyone's too polite. So when you go to a stop sign, every stop sign you go to, no one follows the rules of traffic. And all it does is they're trying to give you acts of kindness. But uh-huh. all it really does is jack up the traffic because everyone's oh. confused. 
So my question is, is do people do that in your and the guy's right. So the in the video, I don't know if you heard it or not. He's like, yeah, you're being Mr. Nice Guy because you're holding up all traffic to let me turn. But you're the only one that gets to feel good while the rest of us are scared because you're doing some shit you shouldn't be doing. Yeah. So how do you get fired up when people try to direct you in traffic like normal cars telling you to go when it's not your turn? Yeah. Yeah. I hate it. Uh, Doug, it, to me. And that's why I think I told you earlier this week. That's why I like driving in bigger cities because sometimes, Doug, especially like right now, I went to Walmart on my lunch hour, right? And freaking, Doug, there's- And, that, and that statement right there is people, how you know he lives in a small town. What? Because you can't go to Walmart or to your lunch hour in a big city. Oh, well, Doug, I almost wasn't able to fucking just because um, a lot of old ass white people come down. They they call them snowbirds, right? And they come down from Canada and shit and they fucking kick it. Doug, Walmart would had- fucking 900 million fucking old people in there it um, it took me forever fuck yeah i i can't go this time of year to walmart during my lunch hour we'll see you funky monkey said that and that's what that video was about she says i get annoyed when they tell me to go and it's not my turn and and i do too because the thing is is like again especially when you're at a four-way stop sign Lompoc's kind of a little a little town so there really is a lot of four-way stop signs uh -huh. and and at the four-way stop signs there's two lanes so sometimes you got eight different damn cars, two trying to go this way, two trying to go that way, two trying to go this way. And and, and I'm just saying, when they, like the guy described in the video, his name's Wayne Country Life. But like he said in the video, when you start doing that, you confuse the hell out of people. So we almost got hit by a red car today because of that shit. Yeah. So, but, but you know, it's crazy. So I guess what my question would be is Wayne Country Life ain't something that I've ever seen on a map. So I'm assuming he's in a small town too. And like you said, in bigger cities, it's different. I think me and you talked about it. When mm -hmm. you're in a bigger city, you have to drive aggressive because everyone's being aggressive. And if you don't drive aggressively, you're not getting off for your exit or over to that lane. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. in, in small towns, it's the opposite. It's almost like they're too polite. So what do you prefer, the aggressive driving or the polite driving? I prefer the aggressive driving hardcore. I can't stand the polite driving. It's it's. Uh, can't, it, I don't want to say counterintuitive, but it's freaking, they're trying, they're trying to make it better. They make it worse. It's such a pain. I hate it. I, I'm just going to say this for anyone out there listening that tries to be kind at the stop sign. At least if you're going to do that, give the person the respect of putting on the orange or the yellow vest. Because if yeah. we're both in street clothes and you just think that you're like an undercover crossing guard or whatever it is you think you're trying to accomplish, <laughs> stop. All right, stop. At least, crossing guard. At least hall monitor. Like, if you're going to do that to me, at least give me the respect and wear the outfit. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. If you want to be, like Al Kukui said, an undercover crossing guard, wear the get up. Come on. Don't know, don't be over here just playing it, you know? So Reinhardt said, uh, his town's so small, they have three stoplights and multiple intersections with no stop or yield signs. For real? Dang, I, where do you so how far away is bumfuck Egypt? Yeah. I didn't I, know Reinhardt was from BFE. There's some um when you get out in the counties here, there's some of those like you know intersections and shit, and they just expect everybody to pay attention or they're gonna die, you know. How how far hey Carl, how far is a uh, Walmart? You got a Walmart? I'm assuming no. Cause it's gonna have to be at one of those three stoplights if you do. Doug, you think they're not putting the hey, they're not that leather. Hey, bro, they're not gonna put a Walmart if they ain't even got a light. Doug, Funky Monkey said they don't even have stoplights. What? I've never seen that, Doug. I've seen some little towns and but never that. So is it just is it stop signs? Oh, but then that means you you probably got a little bit of land at least. Or do they go on the honor system? <laughs> you know? Hey. Just tell uh, them if they're going to do that, the orange vest helps, I promise. Yeah, 100%. What um, else you got? I have, let me see. Okay. Mm, let me see. Oh, what about, okay, let's do this. St. Patrick's Day. What'd you do for St. Patrick's Day? What day was that? Sunday. Past Sunday. What did I do Sunday? I didn't do shit. Okay. That would you I, do? I don't know if it was kind of because it fell on a Sunday. Okay. But it's not really something I do as far as like 
going out on that day. I'm not like, I'm not like, oh, it's St. Patrick's Day. We're green and go out and drink green beer and all that shit that people do. I kind of feel like it's corny white people, but that could just be a, a freaking observation or, or an assumption. But because even when it is St. Patrick's Day, dog, it's not like like if it's on a Friday or something, I'm not like, oh, yeah, let's go party. So I, I don't know. To me, I feel like that's like when you're younger and shit, but I don't you know. know what? You know what? Or, or yeah, I got a theory. Uh -huh. I, I mean, if the people you're hanging out with are cool or, or you know, or fun to be around or just playing hot, that shit changes. Yes. You're a single dude. I don't care how old you are. Some fucking 10 wants to hang out on St. Patty's Day and say, let's get drunk. You're going. Yeah. Yeah. You're but, right. but you're right, though. I mean, for me, um, I remember one time, though, uh, me and Tip Dog and, and I think B. Riley, we were in Reno on St. Patrick's Day and everyone had green beers and that shit was pretty lit. Yeah. That's well, yeah. See, that, that, I mean, I think it would be cool if you had plans like that or whatever, but I just see those people that every year they get like hella stoked to go out and stuff because it's St. Patrick's Day. But I don't know, Doug, like that's never really been my thing. And you know, it's a trip. It's what the up? people that get all gung ho about these holidays and other holidays, but they don't celebrate their own shit. Wait, what was that? They don't celebrate their own shit, you said? They don't understand. Yeah, motherfucker will go out and get drunk on St. Patty's Day with his boys like and, turn, or something, right? and turn around and forget his old lady's birthday. Um, Juice, he's like, I'm 36. Going out um, on St. Patrick's Day isn't for me anymore. Was, um, oh, when you were younger, um, yeah, I, I agree. When I, when I was younger, and that might be the thing, dog, is that I'm Juice's age. I'm 36, so I might have aged out of that going out and shit and being like i don't know well my, my shit is you know it depends on the, the company you keep like you know when me and me don't want on this cruise to ensenada shit i got all fucked up i mean we were taking double and triple shots like we were trying to make our 15 drinks turn into 30 or 45 so you triple know but shot. but i'm a single dude i got an old lady to answer to my kids fucking grown and been out the house for like four years you know, as long as I put a little Chapel Jenkins at the pet resort, I do what the hell I want. So <laughs> the it, pet it, resort. it changes a little bit. So it also a lot of it depends on your situation. But I am with juice on the fact that I'm not just going out just to go out. Like if yeah. there was something cool or a chick that I was trying to get at or something that invited me to something on St. Patty's Day. Boom. I'm there. Right. I'm not even thinking twice. But if I'm like, hey, it's St. Patty's Day. I got to go out and drink green beer. Now I'm good. At, I'd rather just chill home and smoke green weed. I mean, I don't yeah. know. I, you know what, I do think it, it is, um, if you're single and, um, say you're like, oh, you know what, I'm single. I know there's going to be a gang of chicks out tonight that I'm going to go, you know, have fun, whatever, um, buy, you know, buy some chicks, some green beer. So, you know, maybe it, it depends on, um, it has to, let's look at your scenario. Let's, and let's look at your scenario. scenario. Look mm -hmm. at your scenario. So look at what you would have to go through to go drink green beers. Your kid would probably end up knowing fucking your old, you know what I mean? Like where's daddy going? Oh, he's going for St. Patrick's Day with his buddies oh what's saying the whole conversation to an extent takes Can I place go? you know right it's just it's it's a different it's a, and i've been where, where you're at and it's like nah dude especially when you're a parent it's like do i want to go fucking to saint patty's day with my buddy or hang out with my kid yeah yeah it, i heard i heard or i've heard it's a parent when you're a parent is that right yeah i mean your kids gotta come first um but yeah so saint patrick's day let me see Rich, he was kicking ass at bowling, and they cut the game short. That kind of sucks. Doug, I was thinking, uh, no lie, because for those of you that don't know, El Kukui will be here live in person in a few weeks. Um, Shh, secret. So, so you I, guys should meet up with me. Yeah. If you're listening live, you'll you'll um, know that. We'll cut it out of the real show or the one for, that were edited. But when El Kukui comes down, I was already thinking, I was like, when I was driving home today, I'm like, fuck, all right. You know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, there goes to that inner dialogue shit they were saying. But I was like, "Fuck, should we start? Should we have like a night where fucking um, we go out? Fucking maybe we record, then we go out let's, and drink. And let's fucking go fucking pour. record at the titty bar, bro. Can we, can we give? Can we record our show at the titty bar? No, this this will be our plan. We'll record. Oh, can we? I'm serious. Would one of those titty bars let us record? No, nah, we're not. If we paid them, I'm not gonna do that. I mean, you can. Okay. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know. I fuck. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just asking because when I had my my record label back in the day, they'd let us take fucking camcorders in there. I interviewed strippers, all kind of shit. So that's why I'm asking. And yeah. that was in Reno. And that was in Reno too. That wasn't a no Fresno shit. I was in Reno 
And the, yeah, and then be right. Okay, okay, I'll tell you that. So I told you that story. How about this? I took my camcorder in the strip club, pulled the finest chick in the strip club, but I had a lady at the time, so I wasn't really trying to get down with her like that. B. Riles went back like two days later, made his lady for three years. So mm -hmm. that's some true shit. But anyways, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, well, I'm do you know? Do you have a place? I mean, do you want? Can we go to a Starbucks? What's your totally mind? I mean, <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't know. I'm talking shit. Recording on the spot when I get down there. Oh, what about right here? We you can. We can. I'm just trying to be creative, D. That's all. You don't like my. You don't like my setup. Fuck. I don't. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, it's back here. Oh, I have seen it. Yeah, you brought it. Yeah, I like your setup. Your setup's yeah, dope. Yeah, it's basically like that, but fucking in my uh, guest bedroom. Yes, uh, but. Let me see. Uh oh, fucking Lou Dog's here. Now we can get started. On the road to the riches, cause it's all about the paper. Now <laughs> we were waiting for Louis to get here. Um, uh, oh dog, you know what I just saw on some fucking like, TMZ or some bullshit that, that um Kobe's dad gifted him a championship ring, right? So they mm -hmm. won the finals one year. Kobe's dad, it wasn't Kobe's ring, it was a ring that he ordered, you know, like from the NBA and said, gave it to his dad. It's a replica, same exact shit. Right. Um, his dad is selling it. And um, right now it's getting, I think it's up to like $141,000 when I saw it last. So okay. um, what do you think about him selling that? Do you think, say, if you gave something to somebody, would you be, um, would you be indifferent? Would you be excited? Would you be happy, sad, whatever? Like, how would you feel if you gave somebody something like that, a gift, and they they sold it once you died? Well, I, I that's a good question because even for me, if I give somebody something and, and you needed it for something like if he was buying a house or if he just needed it to start a business or something, I would be okay with that. If he was doing some things that were irresponsible or he's paying off gambling debts or a drug problem or you know something like that I, I don't i don't think i would be cool with that man like i don't work hard for my scratch and save my scratch and not be on drugs myself so fucking i can leave to someone who is you know what i mean like that ain't that ain't the ticket so mm -hmm. um i don't know what his reason is for selling that but i i think if it there's a good reason behind it then i think why would you if you're his son you get Give it to him and he can actually use the cash and you're not there to actually give it to him because if you look at what juice says he says kobe didn't leave any money for his parents so if that's all he's got and he needs it on a hard time who am i to say no you know what i mean yes. but now he's Anderson doing him said um weren't kobe and his parents estranged when he died yeah it was they kind of started like you know, butting heads and shit, or whatever, and um, kind of sucks. This old lady yeah. seems manipulative, though, bro. She's she comes out in every interview she does right now, and she's fucking sassy. She's what'd you say? She's sexy. Oh, she is, but she's sassy too. So I don't know. Also, did did Kobe just get estranged from his parents? Did his wife at the time play a role? Like, who knows? We don't know none yeah, of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, and that's what kind of the story is that um, you know, they were kind of having a hard time, I guess, him and his parents, and then. When she got involved in the picture, it uh, kind of, you know, uh, wedged the gap even more, I guess. So that's kind of what, at least that's what I know of the story. But I mean, I don't know, Doc. Who knows what was really going on when he died? But, but um, from I don't want to bust a Rich Davis and ask you a question and not answer it myself. Thank so you. I would say, um, honestly, right now, thinking while I'm alive and shit. I wouldn't really give a shit if anybody say I left. I'm Kobe. I leave my ring to my dad. Say I leave it to whoever, dog. The I I um I don't either. You saw that? What? I don't like Vanessa's vibe either. That's what Luis said. I don't like her vibe, man. Mm. At all. But um I don't think I would really care. Um if anybody sold anything, because I'm fucking dead, you know. But the only thing I, I would I would hope that if there was something I gave to my daughter that was sentimental, I would hope she would hang on to that. But I don't think anything like that would be of any value, really. I think it would just be something, you know, that her and I did. So I really don't give a shit. I mean, if I die, you could sell me. I don't give a fuck. You know, get my ashes and fucking sell them to 
a fucking barbecue and fucking I don't know. I really don't well, give a fuck. But but let me ask you something as a parent, right? Mm. Uh, how deep and strong is your love for your daughter? It's cool. Because I'm a, I'm a I'm a girl dad. So can you just even imagine for one second? Don't you want what's in the best interest of pretty much everyone in her life? Like why would Vanessa Bryant has more money than she can spend? And she still got deals with Nike. She's she's still making money off of Kobe's name. Why would you want his parents to suffer or hurt in the first place? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's your group, your your kids' as grandparents, whether you like it or not. Like, I'm not saying you should put them in a bad situation, let them get, you know, physically abused, mentally abused, mm -hmm. psychologically abused. I'm not saying any of that, but unless any of that's happening, why would you not want what's in their best interest and at least make sure that they're okay. I'm not saying you got to buy my mansion. Mm -hmm. Um, I I have a I have something. So, Juice, he said, um, <laughs> you want to leave me the podcast? I'll say this, dog. If I get hit by a fucking train, I'm more than happy to have you kick it with Elka Kui and you guys try it out. And if not, Elka Kui could try it with whoever he wants. But the only request I have, if I get hit by a, a a bus and Elkakui, you can have your own request if you get hit by a bus. But if I do, just make sure it's a, a Kavino and Rich listener, you know, somebody that that actually digs the show. And, um, you know, oh, it can't be Nicole. Mm, I can't do a real have smut, they said with Nicole. You could, but she would have to, you know, get a tier two or at least tier one subscription. Um, a spot tier two subscription, you have to go both ways. No, not a phase oh. two, a tier oh. two. So, oh yeah, you're right. I got my phase and so tiers you, mixed up. My bad. I my airplane door flies off like they've been lately, and I get sucked out. Then sure, do some episodes with Uncle Kui, and then we'll see what's up. She oh, said, so "Would it listen? She wouldn't want Nicole." <laughs> All right. What about uh? What about Tommy Cavino? That would be cool. That I think. See, something me and like Juice that. could sub him in. Like we could have we could have a special guest like every third episode. Well, I think it would be cool because you're getting an inside perspective. So that would even be a, a whole change to the show, I think would be cool because you're getting freaking somebody who's related, right? Then we hear stories from Covino and Rich, but we're going to get to hear another side of some of those stories, right? Like mm -hmm. Covino saying, you know, my my stupid parents or my stupid brother couldn't get over here. And, you know, my mom's giving my dad a hard time and my dad's whatever. Right. Now we hear Tommy's version on the after show where he's like, yeah, you know, uh, my brother, my brother doesn't even know what's going on. My my dad freaking, you know, stabbed himself again in the leg. and He didn't want to tell <laughs> nobody because he's like, I ain't going to look stupid on social media, you know, <laughs> or some shit. Like that. We get another side of all of these stories or at least. You know, um, just with him being a sibling. So, hey, I got a, I got a DM, and I'm not going to reveal anyone's name, but it's a question about what something that happened on the show. So, uh -huh. I think we got to take a, a commercial break from one of our sponsors, and when we come back, I'll read that question. How's that? I'm sure. What's the question? I mean, what's the where, where's the sponsor? Uh, let me play it. Ready? Let's hear it. When the day finally arrives to get your very own John Deere. My banana. How will you choose the best one for you? I don't know. Your John Deere dealer has the right solution. That's See? backed by a four-year limited warranty. Better be. Ah. That interrupted our... Hold on. Four-year limited warranty. Better be. You'll know you've spent wisely. And we'll always be there for your needs. You better. No matter how big. Grande. Or small. Pequeña. Drive a John Deere fit for you. All right. Drive a Juan Vinalo. Drive a Juan Vinalo. That's the message of the day. So, did you hear Rich last week dog on spot for eating? Then that fucker today on Smut admitted he's a disgusting eater himself. Um, You know what? I actually was going to ask you that. Um, About the eating, I didn't hear that one. And if if someone wants credit for that, just say so in the chat. Yeah, I think they, they talked to me about that, too. And I had told them that I wasn't sure. So I wanted to bring it up on the show. So I'm glad you, you heard about it because, um, yeah, no, I missed it. I really never try to be a disgusting eater myself. I mean, there's sometimes with 
Well, shit, we went today to the spot, bro. Oh, uh, bro, no, we went to the spot. So today I couldn't help it because they were using, I think it was just Monterey Jack, and that cheese had pull, and it was getting everywhere. I think it was on my Instagram. They, Bro, have you ever been to a Mexican restaurant where they just serve you sopa for no reason with the chips and salsa? Bro, they brought me little shell sopitas. It was, dude, it was the best shit ever. <laughs> it was delicious. But the point being food. is they had a cheesy pool is what they did on their cheese. So when you're eating ribs or barbecue sauce all over your fingers or whatnot or wings it's it's kind of hard but you Wang. can still like not slob your whole face up you know and you yeah, don't have yeah. to lick your fingers i mean you can discreetly if that's your deal or if they got wet naps it's up to you you know what i mean like so i'm not judging but i don't wet know naps. you don't... dog i used to have wet naps in like sixth grade did you oh, what no. was her name oh fuck <laughs> I, I never mind wet naps okay never mind all right okay but um yeah, Doug, I know I can't wait to I think I'm gonna make breakfast for dinner. I you know what you know what I don't understand about Rich and and, and again everyone knows I like Rich, but you <laughs> know what I well because his blows are like I don't think and hopefully he hears this one day, but I don't think he understands because every blow that he has has to do with looks or weight or he's just superficial sometimes. Like everything, the only thing that is important to him is superficial shit like money, looks, weights, cool. Fucking shit like that. Like, where's the substance of value? I agree that those are Rich's blows, but do you know Spots blows? What's that? They're like this. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, my bad. Spots <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> spots blows. No. Breakfast for dinner is bomb. Uh, I fucking dog. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh. I'm fucking stoked, dog. You know why? I think I'm even more stoked. I told you I went to Walmart for lunch. Um, of or on my lunch hour. Dog, Did you get a roasted there. chicken? No, I got a fucking um a little packaged sandwich. Uh-huh. And um it was all right, dog, but it was fucking just like a stupid ass little. I mean, it's all right. Get, you gotta get the pretzel bun ones from Safeway. So now fuck, we don't have a Safeway here, dog. We, we haven't had a Safeway here since like 93. <laughs> He takes every kind of blow there is. <laughs> Fuck me. He even admitted to do a real blow. <laughs> For real, huh? Job uh, fucking blow. That's crazy. His favorite sucker is a blow pop. That's crazy. Have you ever seen the movie Blow? Oh, yeah. I haven't. I'm sorry. <laughs> I Too much I Carly, fucker. You gotta you gotta <laughs> watch the other shows. <laughs> All right. Fuck you. That was my sister shit. Thank you very much. Or are you Justin Drake? Nah, but nah, dog. That was after my. That was after my fucking um age, dog. I was. Are you afraid of the dark? Hannah Montana. Nah, that was my sister too, dog. Oh. All right, I'm sorry. Nah, it was fucking um <laughs> like all that with Keenan and Kel. That was okay. my shit around that age. That was TGIF or the hamburger shit. Good burger. Yeah, the hamburger shit. Yeah, the hamburger shit. yeah. yeah rare, burger. rare burger. Good burger, dog. I think I saw Good Burger in the fucking theater. That's how fucking Did you? how how in my shit it was. I still uh, get excited when I see Rear Burger. Yeah? Yeah, I do. Rear Burger, home movie. As long as it ain't Rare Burger, I'm good. Oh, can I eat that booty? <laughs> what do you think about Rich being pushed over by Emmy for the Leprechaun BS? Fill me in. Um, I I don't know if I would say... You know what? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't... I don't I'm over here fucking stuttering. I don't know if I know the full story. I know Rich was making, helping Emmy make a leprechaun tra trap. And um, so Rich was helping Emmy with her leprechaun um, trap. And I don't know if she didn't have shit. So he ended up going to the store or some shit. Um, I forget. I forget the story, Andrew. Um, You'd have to kind of give us a brief, you know. Fur burgers. Yeah, fur burgers. Um, hey, and Rich needs to know that this thing right here that sits on your shoulders, it ain't just for growing hair. He kept talking about buying 19 dino eggs, trying to get bin number eight. Hey, bro, at that point, just go on eBay or Amazon, buy the one you're missing, stick it in the empty old one that didn't have the one you're looking for, and let him open it. He'll package never know the difference. Up. Huh? Ha package it back yeah. up. Doug, you yeah. Yeah. Some fucking little adhesive and put it like, say it came in a bag, because usually all that shit the kids have. Bro, he's you rip four. Open a bag. He's so dog, four. Put a little ad adhesive right there. Yeah, put fucking super glue, right? Put the little bag together. Emmy yeah. probably wouldn't even know. Yeah. They're, right. they're kids. It ain't like they're nine or 12 or 14. Dad, what the fuck is this? 
Yeah. You know what I mean? They're not at that age yet. He wouldn't know. Yeah, go buy number eight on eBay and get that shit over with. Oh, so Andrew Sims. <laughs> I'm glad all the Andrews are here today, Doc. And you know what? Andrew Sims. And let me take this time to tell all of you guys in the chat, thank you, because this is the fucking after show, but later. Because now we got all kind of people chiming in and filling me in on stuff that I missed. Like, mm -hmm. that's an after show. Thank you, guys. Yeah, it makes it more fun. It makes it so much more fun when everybody's participating, you know? Um, for sure. But for those of you that want the the uh, follow-up, she woke up on Easter, meaning Emmy, and had a meltdown because she didn't have a leprechaun trap. So, um, oh, wait, you know what? She woke up on St. Patrick's Day because Easter hasn't happened, dog. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Uh, is it whoop, whoop, or is it womp, womp? There's no M, so I doubt it's that, right? Yeah, they're just, and, and that's the thing too, is like, and I'll be the first one. So when I was with my kid's mom, my kid got away with murder, bro. I, I just wasn't, I was an only kid. I only knew what I learned from, my, from, 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 uh, honey, but <laughs> just stop anyways, <laughs> fucking, uh, but she did, she got away with a lot, bro, because we were first time parents, all the examples we had, we were all spoiled. You know, her mom was spoiled. I was spoiled. And it was like, I wasn't a strict parent, bro, but when I got in a relationship with a parent who was strict and my kids over here having to be driven around to go to sleep at four and her kids fucking go to, they close her eyes and fall asleep as she snaps her fingers. I'm like, something's got to shift. I at least got to meet in the middle. Like these car rides take a lot out of me. And uh, so I had to figure shit out. So I'm not judging them because I was there too. I get it. But you, you got to be the parent first and the best friend later. They'll run out of tears, bro. They're not, those tears ain't unlimited. At some point, they get tired and fall asleep. Um, <laughs> it just reminded me, dog. I just wrote um, Malcolm in the Middle. Well, actually, I put male in the middle. Ooh. But there's an episode of Malcolm in the Middle, dog. The fucking Frankie M Muniz goes to um, sleep at his little homie's house. And the mom puts a timer, dog, for them to fucking go to bed at like 8. And she puts a little timer for four minutes so they could bullshit. And, um, <laughs> and Malcolm's like, four minutes? And the dad comes in. And he's like, listen, I know sometimes boys need, you know, some time to talk. So he's like, he puts it for four minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> he gives them 30 more seconds. But it just reminded me of that shit because, you know, you're expecting one thing and then you're like, oh, that's not what I'm used to, you know? See, and I was different. I'm like, look, check it out. Your mom is fucking don't want to hear no shit. All right. So I'm not telling you what to do. But what I am telling you is that if you're not going to listen, you better figure out a way to not get caught, right? The world is tough and it's all about not getting caught. You better figure out if you're going to do some shit you ain't supposed to be doing. A, don't do the really bad shit, right? Talking when mom said shut up, eh, who cares? That ain't the end of the world. But she's going to bust your ass if she catches you. So if you're going to do the shit, be smart about it. 100%. Um, Malcolm in the Middle was so underrated. Um, so was What About Earl? You know what, Reinhardt? What do you call it? I um just started Malcolm in the Middle with my my daughter, and I feel like sometimes it's a little sorry for her. Sorry, gentlemen. Uh, what happened? I I didn't watch either one of them. Oh yeah, yeah. But um, Malcolm in the Middle, I just started it with my daughter, and it's a little. I think it's maybe she's maybe a year or, or two away from. Is it work. Christian in the Middle or Malcolm? Oh, Malcolm. my bad. Sorry again. <laughs> what? Christian oh. Spotty Swords in the middle. Yeah, but um, but we started, dog, in some episodes. She's fucking digging it. So she just finished Full House. Now she's on fucking Malcolm in the Middle, and she's liking it. So, yeah, that show was underrated. I never watched Reinhardt. I never watched um, What About Earl, so I can't. I can't. I don't have an opinion on that. But Stevie, the little dude in the wheelchair, was hella dope. He said he was Dewey. Okay, so Andrew Fournier, just some feedback, uh, if you guys are only listening. Andrew you were Ann Dewey? Says, he said, I was Dewey growing up. Dewey was the little brother. He's fucking dog. That show's fucking stupid. I think you dig it, Kukui. I'm so, probably would. They're like fucking, there's like an episode, Doug, where they're all trying to hide shit from the mom and she's like calling from dinner. Cause you know, back in the day, they're at the restaurant, they had to find a phone and shit to call and check on the kids and shit. So yeah. they're if like, your parents, if your parents did that, it was fucking funny though, because they're like, my parents didn't do that shit, but um, yeah, I'll tell you right now, if it was sunlight outside, they weren't calling to check on me. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, you know what? I never had that happen, but in sitcoms, it happened a lot in the 90s. Oh, okay. I guess some parents did. Um, uh -huh. But freaking 
<laughs> Dewey, the little brother, dog. It's funny because they're all like trying to hide shit, you know, like, oh, you know, don't tell mom this and this and this. And then fucking right. he goes and gets on the phone and he just starts fucking saying all their business and shit to the mom. And it's just like, dog, if you had a little brother, fucking that's how, how it was sometimes, you know? You know, I had a little buddy. I had a homie. Yeah. Yeah, but that was it. Dewey was hell on wheels. Um, <laughs> Reinhardt says he dug the mom. That's so funny because. I, I I don't know, Doug. Um, they were always such like a weird, like old, trashy, dysfunctional family. Like growing up, I I I, I never. Um, you know who I, I I didn't dig her, but you know who I did dig. Um, mm-hmm. the mom from. Uh, fuck. What's the the show? Grounded for life. That mom I dug. She was fucking. Um. She was more my shit than the mom from fucking Malcolm in the Middle. So I like Peg Bundy. How about that? Peg Bundy? Yeah. I bet you wanted a Peg Bundy. And my buddy liked Marcy. I didn't like Marcy. The brother's name who was at the military school, Juice is asking. That was Francis. Danny Masterson's brother in real life. Yeah. So Danny's Masterson's brother was um, Francis. That was the older brother. And then... um, I don't want to bore Kukui too much, but then the the Reese was the middle brother. So it's Francis, Reese, Malcolm, Dewey for any of you. But um, but hey, you know what, Doug? I know you were kind of know. I know you were kind of out and about a lot as a kid. Was there any shows that that you fucked with real hard? Like who's the boss or anything? Well, I fucked with all yeah, so I did fuck with who's the boss. Um, and I don't know if I said this in the last show, but you know what's crazy? Is like I was oh, thinking bad, back I ice in there. I was thinking to myself, I'm like, self, we played a shitload of video games too, right? I mastered all the Nintendos, the Tetris and Mario's and Zelda's and my, I'd never beat Mike Tyson, even though he's fighting Glass Joe, but um, we, we played all the Nintendos and we did all that shit, man. We played, you know, all of it, Sonic, all of it, just like these kids do. You know what the difference Mm. is? What? We played when it was dark. You know why? Because we'd rather be outside. When it was that dark? was shit we, we did that was shit we did when we had to come inside. Right? Wait. You go to your room and play video games. Like we didn't play video oh, games you, didn't you came in when it was dark. And that's when we played video games because we would rather be outside playing in the neighborhood, yeah. riding bikes and doing kids shit. And although we played video games, in my opinion, just as much as these kids do, because like you know, we play Madden all night, NBA Live all night, NBA yeah. Jam all night, Mario Kart all night, Tetris all night. I mean, we played everything. It's just we would stay up all night long on weekends and fuck until 3, 4, 5 in the morning playing the shit. And then we'd get back up at 8, 9 in the morning and go play outside. 100%. Doug, I remember me and my sister, we would play, Doug, in the summers, like when I was in like probably like, I don't know. Sixth grade or some shit. Right. All night, dog. We would fucking play on PS2, Dave Mira's bike pro, whatever. Um right. that Dave Mira game, dog, where he's on a bicycle was so fucking fun, dog. That oh, was yeah. We would stay up all night playing that bad boy. Shit, I remember the old school California games on the Nintendo, the, the regular Nintendo, the NES. Yeah. Or Contra or any of that shit. And you know, uh funny and that, is that, but like Andrew, Andrew says Andrew says when it was raining, but no, we played in the rain because you know we did. I live right across the street from the school. I was the second house in from the cul-de-sac and it crossed to the school. And we would play football in the grass. And when it was raining, you slid, and that's when you could fucking yeah, we used to play, we we go play football. Cul-de-sac. <laughs> um oh yeah. So freaking, you know what though, Doug? It's funny because what? like that's something that I never really um dealt with. You're in Northern California, four years. Um not in Arizona, and um, I don't think to me, Doug. We didn't here in at least Southern Arizona, where we're, we're a, a stone's throw away from from Mexico. Um, we didn't we didn't have a whole lot of rain, so we didn't have very many of those rain yeah. days. You know, Cacahuate away, bro, or what? Yeah, we were one Cacahuate away. Um, Andrew Fournier says uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. That yes. game was pretty cool, but I didn't really fuck with it that much. That was more like my cousin Ruben. He would fuck with that. That was his shit. Yeah, Tony Hawk was dope. Yeah, nah, we we in cold, and the cold didn't stop us because we had them Parker coats, some big ass starter bomber jackets. You know what I mean? Like that's the thing too. I grew up. We were doing stuff that we probably shouldn't have been doing, but yeah. there was shit. No rain or fucking when it was gonna stop us. Doug, you know what? I have a fucking and and anybody that's probably around my age 
will remember this, but or you might even El Kakui remember this because this was when the first PlayStation came out, right? Yeah. Uh, we got I remember PlayStation One came out. We got a PlayStation, and um <laughs> one of the only games we had was that blue demo that came with the PlayStation dog. We played the shit out of that. I think that one did have um Tony Hawk oh, game Tony. day. Oh yeah. You know what? NFL fucking game day. That's what that's what we switched from bad and game day when that PlayStation came out. Dang. And then Andrew Fournier says we had weeks of rain during the summer. Can you imagine dog it raining? Oh, yeah. I, I lived in Coos Bay, Oregon. Google how many inches. Let's find out. Hold on. Hey, Alexa, how many inches of rain does Coos Bay, Oregon get annually? From cookieservices.com, Coos Bay, Oregon gets 64 inches of rain on average per year. By the way, you 64 have a new inches. Coos Bay is taking it, huh? Hey, there's a, there's a lot of rain over there. Jet Moto. <laughs> Juice Doug. Juice Joe, Jet Moto. There was freaking um that I think it was Tony Hawk's Pro Skater that they probably had then that had like one level on it. And then uh oh my god, Jet Moto, dog. I, I was fucking a Jet, Jet Moto. Moto. We fucking had um uh, had what? A rapa the rapper? I don't know. I don't remember that one. But that that demo disc, dog, we fucking played that shit into the ground. Oh man, there was a couple of games. Yeah. I don't remember. That's, but these ones are that's old school, bro. Old school. Yeah. Hey, I got it. I got it. You know what? I got to bring something up. What's one up? of my favorite specials? How'd you feel about Guido behind the velvet rope and the chain gang? That was hella dope. I'm not. I'm not as versed in it, so it was a good class for me to take. Yeah. No, it was dope. I liked it. And he had all the different styles. He's pointing them out. He drew the picture. Yeah, what Camino. That's. What do you think about his accessories he had? He had this one little thing to clean the the um, jewelry. Are you done with that, or do you have a different? You know what? I bought them. They're they're red. And they got a little basket and it's plastic, and you dunk it up and down. There's a little brush you can scrape. But a uh, old uh, a old Latina chick told me back in the day she was crazy, and she told me the trick was is uh you get some of the foamy mouth toothpaste out of your mouth, and then you get an old ass toothbrush and you shine them up like that. And I, you know what? To, in, in my humble opinion. I think it works almost as good, if not as good as as the uh, the jewelry cleaner, and it's cheaper because you're it's just you're just you're spitting it out anyways. You know what I'm saying? So instead of buying the ten dollars a jar or whatnot, and it works, the stuff works. And I don't know, there might be someone out there that says it it eats away gold, but I've been doing that shit for the last twenty five years, and I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that's awesome, Doug. That um, you have those kind of remedies and stuff because. Or, or I don't even know if you would call that a remedy because that's something I would never think of, dog. But it's so dope because, like you said, you're brushing your teeth, right? You're foaming up anyway, you know, and then you fucking give it a little spit. Fucking yeah. <laughs> well, and I'll share some more. Her name was Linda. She was a cuckoo old lady. Me and Bo Colombo worked with her at Meanin's. And her remedy for no hangover was two Advil before you start drinking and two when you're done. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. two in the morning. And she said no hangover. I don't know. I never mixed nine Advil with my fucking... 15 beers, but I took her I took her word for it. Doug, I never did that just because I was scared. I was like, isn't that shit like, aren't you not supposed to do that shit? Can't you die or something? It tells you in the bottle. It says three or more. Be careful. And yeah. I know people do it, but you know who doesn't do it? This guy right here. Yeah, same, right? And, and you're like, it's it's not that it's good or bad. It's just I don't give a fuck. I, yeah, exactly. That's it. Do it. State your reasons. Tell me how many times you did it. How many you took. I'm Carly, curious. You know, whatever. Yeah, you watch iCarly. You're good. I'm not judging you, but uh, I just I don't do it. But hey, yeah. Um, Tell me something cool. Uh oh. Speaking of iCarly, dog, did you see that Quiet on the Set documentary? I did not. I. You know what? Again, that was kind of like not my generation. So. It, I'm not, you know, I don't know if it it resonated more with me because that was my generation as far as like not the iCarly and Drake and Josh shit, but like all that. And um, they talked about like, are you afraid of the dark? That was my shit. You know, all that whole era. They said from 94 is when it all started. Right. Right. What? 89, 90. I was six when that happened. So that whole dog six to fucking 10 or 11, that would be um what till like 2000 ish. That was when, like, I, I watched all that and then, like, the Amanda show. Right. And that was kind of like, like, you know, are you afraid of the dark and shit like that? Salute your shorts and things like that. But 
then I kind of aged out of it and didn't watch Drake and Josh, Hannah Montana, iCarly or whatever the fuck. But um, but I think since a lot of the shit from when it started uh -huh. and a lot of the people involved, I, I thought it was a really good special. Hella creepy, hella weird, but it was it was four episodes. They're like an hour each, roughly, Doug. I watched them all last night. See, and and I and again, it's kind of the same thing as the Avil thing. Hey, people want to watch it, go for it. I get it, especially if that was your jam. Makes total sense. Mm -hmm. For me, my reason of not giving a shit and not watching it is a I don't know any too much about that stuff because it just wasn't my generation. And B, it's chomo shit. So if I don't even know the people and I have no interest in the characters involved, why well, do I want to see him get molested? I'm good. <laughs> I I pass on that one. Bro, let me watch the warrior highlights. Yeah, yeah. No, I feel you. Um, and see, that's another thing is that like Drake and Josh wasn't my shit, but there was just with them being in pop culture around that time. Well, you're you're closer mm -hmm. to that connection though. Well, Drake's a year older than me. You know, right. that's what I'm and that's what I'm saying. That was my kid watched that shit. You yeah. know what I mean? So I can't go watch some chomo shit about what the show my kid used to watch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that, that's just weird. Yeah, yeah. No, I feel you. But... I mean, it, it's weird to me for me to do it. I'd feel weird doing it. How about that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just watched but, BMF or something. Yeah, <laughs> hey, hey I uh, they got power coming out again. I'll wait for that. Yeah, uh, you know, this is something that I missed. So, if anybody in the chat or or Kukui or if you remember, um, it says Rich's doctor's advice. What did Rich's doctor tell him? I don't know. What I don't know. What, I don't know. We, Dr. Uh, Seuss. Dr. Norm, the people that make the edibles? Um, I'm maybe they told him uh it's time for your colonoscopy or something. I don't know. I, I really I missed that. I must have missed that whole well, until, until someone fills us in, I got something. Yeah. Okay. Rich Rich wanted to go on spring break every year and have one drink to see what the college kids look like and are doing. No, uh, what is he on this documentary that I just watched or what? I mean I, I don't I don't I don't know why he would do that. Like, I okay, mean, if you're great. gonna go hang out, I don't think it'd be wrong if they went and hung out there if they still kind of look young and they're dancing and hanging out. But like the fact that he's saying he just wants to go kind of to judge and gauge where he's at versus where they're at is just I don't know. It struck me a little the wrong way. I, I, it's it just kind of almost seems insecure. I don't know. Why not just keep yeah. doing your thing, stay in shape, stay going to the gym, stay relevant, stay talking to everybody, young people, your age, younger, and you'll be all right. Why would you got to go get a grade for it at the, at the Las Vegas pool? You know what, dog? You know what I think it really is? I think he wanted to go kind of parade Sher Shara. <laughs> Sarah. I, I think he wanted to go parade her around like, like, oh, yeah, you know, I used to be you guys. Look at how hot my wife is, like type of shit, you know? I kind of, I don't know, Doug. I feel like it's all about, like you mentioned earlier, it's all about vanity and shit and went with Rich like, oh, look at, yeah. But just, what do you get out of that? Like, should it know. just be enough that you got a hot wife that you get to bang whenever you want? Like, and that, and she's cool and she's a loving mom. Like, now you got to show her off too? I'm just, it confuses me. And again, no judgment. Do what you got to do. That ain't my relationship. I just, I don't get it. That's all. Yeah, Doug. So some of the feedback says, uh, Rich ha Rich has severe issues with getting older. He's a weirdo. <laughs> well, he is. And then remember he said that no fat people were at spring break. And we talked about that. Maybe not the fucking Maxim party, but I promise you Fatasaurus Rex is at a pool somewhere fucking belly flopping. All right? Yes, they are there. And they're there. They're everywhere. Fat people are everywhere. And that's okay. And they just might not have got into the club when there's limited space on a Friday night in fucking Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know, you got to keep in mind, part Rich should know this. He's in media. He don't need the guy that had a record on the hip hop under the label to tell him this. You image is everything. Those clubs don't let trolls in for a reason. And so, of course, if you go to the good parties, they're going to selectively pick who's at that party. Do you want fucking Patty Fat Snacks fucking in her 399 pounds and a G-string on the, the cover of the, the Maxim party? No, that's not what they want for their image. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I'm okay with Patty Fat Snacks. Maxim isn't, but Rich needs to get it. He needs to understand that. Yeah. Um. Today, they were showing, they were doing Um. what was like the first picture you have like with your spouse or your significant other. And it started a whole long conversation. Well, 
um, somebody in the feedback, and I, I don't know, these, these sound like fighting words, so I, I don't, I'm not going to give credit to the name unless they want to, but it says, what about that picture of Covino, um, Covino, Jordan, and Rich, and some random chick while Sarah was home with her new baby? So this picture, if I'm not mistaken, was before Covino and Jor Jordan started dating, I think. Then they were in Vegas. And um, they yeah, I think they were in Vegas. And so it was a picture of them and some random chick. So um, she said, what do you think about them doing that while Sarah was home with the new baby? I honestly, I don't think it really bothers Sarah much. Um, she, I think it's rich being rich, you know, and I don't think that Sarah would want, oh, just because I'm home rich should be having a miserable time while he's out i don't think I, I don't i don't think any good human would feel that way yeah so i, I don't know so and she's a good person mm -hmm. but but no one should feel that way that's scumbag shit like we all have roles and stuff that we take on you know and 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 obviously taking on nine months of pregnancy is a huge one and we'll never know how they feel but there's some roles that guys take on here and there that necessarily don't equal that but it's 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 the balance of the relationship. And in any role, you don't, you know, if Rich was home with a broken nutsack for fucking three months, would he not want Sarah to go out or do anything? Did you say broken nutsack? Yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm just giving you a, a funny example. Yeah. That's what I said. Uh, he yeah. was bedridden for three months with a broken nutsack. Is Sarah not allowed to take pictures with guys? Yeah. I, I don't think. I don't think she um the rules aren't the same, are they? Nah. -uh. But or she um, just has a little more character. One of the Andrews, let me see. Which Andrew was it? One no, I agree with I agree with Funky Monkey though, because Sarah's just super chill. That's why Rich got lucky. Andrew Fournier says this dog. Watch what is it? He's rich. Well it half it halfway is. Rich. He is vain, but this podcast is kind of about him. So, so I mean, we talk about his vain tactics a lot. Uh, yeah. So, and you, um, and you know what, Funky Monkey, I'll say this. What did she say? She said, I feel like it didn't bother Sarah to be home with the baby when he went out. Yeah. I'll say this though from my relationships, from the three major relationships, I'm talking major, just not hoes, but major relationships in my life where like I was in committed relationships, only one of them was cool like that. Yeah. The rest o what, only like, only like, one of them. And then she knows who she is. She might be listening right now. That's how cool she is. She might be listening right now. But only one of them was cool like that and didn't trip. Yeah. The, the like, other two tripped time. straight up. So most girls do trip for the most part. Yeah. Or if they don't trip, they want a free pass. The people that are the coolest, like the dudes and the girls that that don't trip in the relationship, that do it because they just care about you and want you to have a good time, and they have no expectation in return. It's not always going to be well. Now I get to go out with the with the dudes because you went out with the girls. Like yeah. it's that's the ones that are cool that don't use it as a ticket for them to pull the same shit next time, whether it's the husband or the wife. Yeah, no, I feel you. Um, I think that. That has to be kind of like, man, that's got to be a pain in the ass to be like, have it in the back of your mind. Like, damn, I'm out with Kukui. Am I going to hear about this? Because she's going to be like, oh, well, now I get to go out with whoever because you went out, you know, like keeping score like that, dog, I think is whack. Well, and even when I was with Augustina for however fuck 10 years, however long it was, bro, I don't think either one of us ever accused the other one of cheating. I know I never accused her. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't think she ever accused me. Like, it, but, but then there's other relationships that you're in where you get accused every day. What do you think about this question? It says, um, or not question. It says this statement. What do you think about this statement? Um, just because your spouse is cool doesn't mean you should do what you want. What do you think about I, that? I think it's a great statement. I think that, uh, you don't take advantage of people. You know, I think that you use that kindness for the things that are really super important, I think that with that being said, I, I'm not on his status. I don't really have people pulling me over in public wanting to take pictures. So I think that if he could stay out of pictures with chicks, that'd be good. But if they say, hey, Rich Davis from XM and the Covino Rich Show and Fox Sports Radio, can I get a pic? He almost has to give it to him. 
You know what yeah. I mean? I, yeah. I think he shouldn't be a scumbag. I, I think Andrew is absolutely right. If if your spouse is cool, even more reason to respect her and only do it when it's super important. Okay. So um, I know Kristen is cool with Spot doing... Um, but that's that trade pass for trade pass shit. What do you mean? Well, she's cool with him taking a pipe because she wants to take one too. Sarah is not necessarily letting Rich go out and be cool and, and not being a bitch because she wants to do the same thing. She's just her love's point. unconditional. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. Um, I don't think I don't think Spot and Kristen have that same connection. That um, that just kind of do as you please but respect me type of shit or like I, I hate to say it, Spotty, and if you're listening, but this is how it just appears to me from the outside looking in. But everything that woman does seems it appears to be motive based. Yeah. And 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 Sarah's not. She seems to do shit out of the kindness of her heart. There's a huge difference. Yeah. Well she does come from Texas. Don't they say bless your heart there? I you know in my experience in life, it don't matter where you come from, you either are like that or you're not, or you're somewhere in the middle. And in my life, where I come from, it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, what you did. Rich likes that horn, too. So. <laughs> That's good. It don't. I know the girls that would trip balls over that. See, she says, Funky Monkey says. She only knows they, the girls that would trip. What's a sleuth phone? Like a burner? Uh, Yeah, I guess. No, no, no. To sleuth phones, to go through them, fucking trying to find shit like, um, like and, you know, those internet sleuths that find yep. fucking, you know, fuck cats or whatever. And you know what's funny about that? And again, I put this on my on my my kid, my mom, whatever. I was talking to I seen Augustine. And I, I went to I had to go to Fresno the other day to help my mom, so I hung out with Augustine a little bit. And that was another thing we were talking about. I guess whatever. She's talking to the girls at work, whatever. We've never went through each other's phone. I've never said, "Hey, let me see your phone" and start looking through her shit. I've never tried to go through her email. I for what? Kavit. This is the after show, but later. So I'm going to go ahead and quote Kavino and Rich. A while back, they said, if you're looking for something, you're going to find it. You might find an email that's harmless, but because you thought you were going to find something, you know, that you didn't want to see, it magnifies what you actually do find. And if you don't trust them enough to not go through their shit, what are you doing? Can you ever be happy if you're in a relationship that you feel the need to go through their shit? Because that part of you means either you're just, you just don't trust them. And that's not... You don't have that's not healthy relationships for sure. How do you how do you want to be in a relationship like that, dog? You know, I mean, and I don't give a shit. She can go through my phone whenever she wants. You know what I mean? It has nothing to do with that. And I'm sure if I asked her to go through her phone when we were together, she would have let me went through it, too. But what's the point? Why? Why? Yeah, because, Doug, because you're insecure. You're looking for something, you know. OK, or maybe they're being tell, tell, me, tell me, tell me. Why else? I'm telling you other reasons. So if, if 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 that's all true, why are you in the committed relationship? That right there should tell you she ain't the one. Yeah, some people some people like that shit, Doug. You know, I mean, I I don't know, or maybe they're so hurt that they want to make sure they don't get fucked over this time from a previous one or you know what i'm saying i don't know i feel like there's a million reasons or a million things but, but that with that being said you shouldn't even start that relationship because you're still hurt from the last one so let's just break it down it's probably not even healthy for you to get into a new relationship until you work out that shit yeah because you're gonna fail regardless you can't just get into a new relationship not healed start going through that person's phone and expect good results yeah, um, yeah, no, I agree. And I also agree with a statement that um, Andrew Sims says, Rich is lucky. I think um, Sarah's the only one that would put up with his BS. He had dog. And I'm not I'm not trying to. Um, I don't want to make this him. make this I'm the not, bag on Rich show. Yeah, but somebody yeah, we're going to have to shift me, gears here in a minute. <laughs> dog, some, somebody told me one time they went to a meetup. Right. And um, they were like, yeah, you know, it was cool. You know, um. They're like, you know, that they were they were down to earth and shit like always and blah, 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 you know. And they were like, um, I didn't get to talk to Rich much because this was um, I didn't get to talk to Rich because he was in the corner the entire time talking to um, I don't know if it was like Jess in Vegas or something, but or it was some 
blonde chick or whatever right mm -hmm. and um and and i don't think sarah would be opposed to that because she knows rich is a flirty guy or whatever right. but again like what what they the feedback said earlier just because your wife's cool with it doesn't mean you should be doing it right so that's kind of some shit and and i'm not saying how long ago this was or what or you know last year but it, dri it drives his ego whatever. though bro that shit but, strokes his ego but yeah i i mean that's you know rich it strokes him um yeah but well, anyway so let's let's go pro rich here i saw rich uh, made a post about otani uh-huh and it's going somewhat vi viral so i got what like a hundred thousand views already right now yeah and i, I you, rich you want to tell him what the take is what what what's rich saying about otani and his trainer's connection to that gambling probe um i, <laughs> I missed the question my bad what's up so what what's Rich talking about with Sho Shohei Otani and his uh his interpreter and the gambling probe? Mm -hmm. What about it? You tell me. I tell me what what's going on. Um, Rich was saying that. Uh, well, you know what? Let's play it. it. It's um, Rich is saying he's talking about his um interpreter being the fall guy. Right. You know, sometimes you got to be the fall guy, right? Like like uh, the million dollar man, seven million dollar man. So let let's see. Okay, wait, wait, hold on. Let me, let me grab this and connect it to the Wi-Fi. Sorry about that, guys. Um, Roadcaster. The fall guy, like uh, the new one with Ryan Gosling, or? Like that game that all the kids play. Fall guys. Oh, you're not talking about the TV series that aired from oh, 81 to 86? They tip in some. All right, click the link for a brand new over. Oh, Five man. Yeah. It's expired already. Say about 50. Maybe it's on their reels. I don't know. My bad. Um, right here. All right, I got it. So the more I read about this Otani thing, it's wild, right? So here's what I'm getting. They fire his interpreter because he stole money from Otani and gambling's involved. Now, here's the thought. This guy, Ipe Musahara, is Otani's best friend since he's moved to the United States. Baseball players are allowed to bet on other sports, but not in Orange County where he was in California. So I think this just smells of he's taking the fall for Otani. Otani was probably betting on other sports. Can't do it in the state of California. Has nothing to do with baseball. So Rich is saying that, you know what, maybe they're all in on it. Well, I think definitely, I mean, think about it. Like, I, I don't know. My brain thinks different and I'm in control of my money. So I'm definitely not going to have an interpreter access my account. So right there to me, the way I think red flag, right? Why does the fucking interpreter have access to your bank account? Um, right. Yeah. My kid don't have access to my bank account. Why the fuck would you sign a $700 million contract and let your interpreter have access to your bank account? So right there to me, red flag. Number two, he's my second long-term relationship. She was in banking. So I never was in banking, but obviously she come home from work and share stories. So someone please tell me how this asshole wrote half a million, a million dollar checks out of someone else's account and no one contacted the slugger to say, Hey man, million dollars went to bro. I almost didn't get the, a bank account one time because of my last employer and what they did. So you're telling me this dude can write checks to questionable known bookies for sums of a half a million to a million dollars. And what's his name? Don't know about it. So then they have two different stories. Now they're saying he knew about it at first. And the, the, the interpreter had a gambling debt and Otani was helping him out with it. Now he backtracked and said he didn't know none of it. There's a whole lot of fuckery going on. And when I looked at ESPN last time, uh, it's saying that Major League Baseball is going to investigate. Yeah. Um, I but you know what though? I, I think Rich is on to something. I think it's I mean, and you mentioned red flags. I think so. I think I think they're all in on it. Um, I think Rich made a really good point. And um, yeah, I mean I think he, I think he deserves his viral video. Yeah, he does. And like you said, um, you know, I mean, your your kid doesn't even have your banking information. Why, you know, so I mean, 
Right. And she don't. She Something. don't know my pin. She don't know my passcode. She don't know what bank I'm using right now. Nobody does. No one close to me right now, except maybe my roommate knows where I'm banking and what I'm doing. So why would an interpreter know that? And yeah. even him don't know where my cards or my pins or no shit like that. Even him don't know. Damn. Hell no, crazy. bro. What are you leaving posted around on sticky notes? I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, make uh, no damn sense. That story don't make no sense. Check for Rich. That shit was spot on. Yep, 100%. There was actually, there was something else he did this week. I didn't write it down, but Rich, he was cracking me up. Um, oh, Doug, you want to hear this shit? So um, he Rich had said like two weeks ago, oh, if you're watching your kid, uh, watching uh, the show with your kid, I, I question your judgment of being a parent or some bullshit. But anyway, so I'm watching the show with my kid last night, right? <laughs> and, um, and Rich said something about, they're talking about ethnic cuisine, and Rich said something about guacamole right and my daughter goes she's all like coloring or whatever dog and she's all guacamole like she was capping on the way he said it because it was so like rich davis right it was so mm -hmm. that there was no he didn't even try to like throw in a guacamole like you don't have to throw it all crazy but just he said guacamole and my daughter go, at least clear your throat bro she's all dog my daughter guacamole <laughs> Uh, that's so, great that's uh, why he don't uh, want her listening because he don't want to get clowned by a third grader a <laughs> uh, second grader second grader see second grader but um yeah but dog nah my my fuck my daughter's funny as hell dog did i tell you what she did to me the other day she's mm -hmm. walking around so i'm a big dude sometimes my fucking love handles or, or you know belly might mind push my my pants down a little bit right you might see some blunt plumbers crack so the other day huh. my, my, really my, Maybe you show plumbers crack. Maybe I don't know. Okay. For the record, I don't. Okay, dog. If I'm walking around my house and I got some drawers, I'm not on, showing no plumbers crack. And they might be a little loose. And it, again, dog, do it. Do it. Hundred pounds do, lighter than me. So, I don't care if I'm hundred pounds heavier. I'm gonna get us no. three sizes too big. But go ahead. <laughs> my daughter, she 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 scoots her her fucking pants down a little bit, and she walks. She goes, "Look at, I'm daddy." <laughs> I was like, hey, all right. See? Okay. And that's reason number one why you shouldn't have plumber's crack. Uh yeah, whatever though. Do the that. influence you had, bro? <laughs> I know, but it was funny as hell. I was like, all right, cool. All right. Um, uh, oh fuck. So yeah, yeah. What you got? How much time has anyone got? has anyone contributed in the uh any anyone listen contribute to the folder or no? Mm -mm. No, um nobody nobody's contributed to the folder, but um, I did get some people reaching out via text message. That was cool. So if you guys are yeah. listening, check it out. Um, the text message, 928-235-5285 um, during the week, if there's anything you want us to talk about or whatever. Um, you know what? Actually, I, I got some shit too. Yeah. Can I so run through these recordings? Bring your shit and I'll, I'll pull up. I'll All pull right. up the shit that um, we have on the feedback from, from our listeners. Let's see. You mean to tell me that you built a time machine? meeting people online is the premier and primary place people are meeting each other in the dating world no way way but he busted out a little graph that really showed you and it was from 2020 so imagine what it is now way of how like way. i'm just estimating it's 90 plus 90 percent plus couples of today What's have met name? online as opposed to meeting in person at the bar or through friends way. i believe like the study goes back to the early 1900s like 1950s and it was like through friends so how did you meet jordan i met augustine online yeah i did uh, i i i i met my lady in person did you so we're that's 50 percent, right how many how much percent did they say 90 90 percent. well tip dogs in the other room he met his chick online yeah, but I think it's a sign of the times, right? Well, yeah, and and let me let me touch on that. And there's a reason why I wanted to bring that up. It's you know, it's the reason we got legal is because all the 70 and 80 year olds who are croaking right now are the last remaining group that was against it. All the hippies of the 60s are now getting to be those cats, and they don't care. And so, it's a, as the generations old get old and die off, things change. So the reason I say that is, do you know how many of these people under 30 
order groceries online for delivery or for pickup because they don't want to deal with people and or they think it's more efficient like target like you know i'm in the retail world they boom they've got four or five people at all times walking around with these little carts putting orders together because they're cranking out these online orders walking out to people's cars so i think as a society have you ever called in a starbucks because you didn't want to wait in the drive-thru and you wanted this shit to be ready when you got there how about a mcdonald's you ever order from the app and they say hey tell us what your number is when you pull to the drive-thru it's it's kind of the society that we're living in. Everything we do because of the phone is a Prime shortcut. Now. Right? Prime now. Well, yeah. Well, it's everything's a shortcut. Everything's a shortcut. Get it delivered in two days. No one wants to wait. No one wants to go to the bar and mac on the bartender for nine months no more to finally catch her drunk one night and take her home and bang her. Like, that's 80s type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, no one's doing that no more. Yeah. That's Unless funny. you're 80. Mm -hmm. Anyone 30 or younger... They're lazy. They don't want to put in the work. This tool and this thing can be a very effective tool. What does Spot say? If it's for a dude, he can go online and have poll in an hour. I challenge anyone to go to the bar and get fucking wiener within an hour or get a chick within an hour. You know what I mean? Isn't that what Spot said? He said if he wanted a dude on his phone, he could get one within the hour. I'll tell you this. You weren't doing that shit in the 80s the old way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you went and got the town floozy or a lizard lot. The town floozy. Yeah. I'm just saying. Um, what do you call it? Louis says, uh, I've yeah, how many chicks I've met online, bro. Every single girl in my life in person. Oh, you know what, Doug? This is something that one of the listeners had said when they had texted us. Um, Rich can't talk about anything without somebody backing him up. And it's so oh dog fuck we had because he knows he's full of shit he needs allies. It's funny because he'll be like, look, M Mauser says, Mauser says, yeah, Rich, you, you're right or whatever the fuck, right? He always has to go to somebody in the chat to say that he was right or whatever the hell, you know? Well, because he needs validation. It goes back to what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. He wants everything validated, and I get it. We all seek validation from time to time. He just seeks it more often than others. Yeah. Um, let me see. You know, who don't like their boo to tell them that they love them or that they mean the world or that your kid to tell you that daddy, I love you. And you know, you're the biggest, toughest guy on the planet. Like everyone seeks validation. I get it. Just not 99.9% .9 of everything they do. You know what? Um, on over promise, they were talking about, uh, failed promotions and stuff. Doug, what are some of the biggest things, not only in sports, but what would you think like target? I mean, you Doug, you saw this in groceries and shit. I'm sure well, let me let me talk crazy. let me talk on the, the thing one more time because Luis said every single girl you met in his life was was in person. Imagine how dangerous you'd be if you did the online shit too. Yeah. Then you got both, you know what I mean? And the online shit's easy. You just gotta not be a weirdo and ask for titty shots on the first message. <laughs> Andrew Sim says if you don't agree with Rich, then you're um a quote unquote bozo. And uh, yeah, hundred percent. Andrew Hart. Sometimes he's very smart, but like today, he's a fucking bozo. You he's know? a bozo. And you're like, he's a bozo right? because he don't agree with you today, dog. Like, but he was smart as fuck yesterday when he did agree with you. It makes no sense. And he's also the dude that gets pissed off and takes little breathers out of the room a lot. He, Doug, that is a great observation. He has been doing that so much lately, and he's like. You guys really want to know what happened? I have a headache. I'm going to go get some medicine. I got um, another one for you, too. Why, why can't he fucking... He's right there. He's on his phone. Text Sarah. She brings him fucking coffee to his fuck, right? But it's when he feels like it. So why don't he be like, hey, babe, can you bring me some fucking town on my head? It's fucking killing me. She'll you know, what, in, dog, you know? You know what it is, is? I'll tell you what it is. And I think if you go back... I got another ob obvious observation. If you go back to older shows, Covino has just matured a little faster because he had his daughter a little earlier. So in those earlier shows, he agreed with Rich a lot more. There's a lot of disagreement with Rich because Cavino's not going to sit there and say he goes to the young section to check out chicks. Cavino don't do shit like that. So there's, I think Cavino has matured faster because his daughter's older and you're a single dad or not a single dad, but you're a, you're a girl dad. Sorry, bro. You're a girl dad. And um, but you see it like when you're raising a girl like that and you have a strong bond with your daughter, 
you don't look at every cheek that walks through the parking lot anymore. Like certain things just change, bro, because you have a, a you're, you're a girl dad and you look at it different. And so Rich's kids are still young. You can still be a scumbag when they're six, but when you're worried, <laughs> when you're worried about them going on dates and what's going to like, Kavino's worried about her eight day trip that she's taken. You, yeah. you process information different then. And so what I'm getting at with that long winded response was that uh basically they don't I don't think they all agree with Rich and, and Spot is fucking single doing all kind of wild ass shit so he don't understand any of it you know so Rich is just kind of out there on an island where he can still kind of behave like a scumbag so he thinks as long as he doesn't cross certain lines and everyone else is like nah that's not cool and he don't like yeah. it yeah um Reinhardt says I mean you brought up being a girl dad and Reinhardt says that it does change you. Um, I've never been a boy dad though, so I, I have nothing to, I, I don't know the pro I do. Of, of it, you know, I I've had, you know, in those relationships, there's children involved when you're in them that long, you get really close and connected with them. And yeah, no, I mean, it, it's just, it's different. No, because you're a boy, because you have to think about it. Like if it was a mini you, right. You never tell your daughter to go pee outside in the bush. Would you get mad if your five-year-old did it? If there's no restroom? No, there's just certain things that are different. Like, like when he goes out with a chick, it's not the, if his first date, you're not going to be nearly nervous as you are for your daughters. Yeah. You're when be- she gets her heart broken at prom, you're not going to be, it's not the same thing as if some girl dumps him. It's yeah. not, there's just different levels to the shit. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, if you think he's banging, if he's past a certain age, you might say, hey, man, don't fuck up. Here's this condom. If you do it, you better use it. You will never tell your daughter that. If someone yeah. tells your daughter, let's get on birth control, it's going to be the mom. It is not going to be the dad. Yeah. There's just, it's different shit, dude. They're just, daughters are more like fragile, emotional creatures. And boys are now too way more than they used to be, but they didn't give a fuck about us growing up, bro. Like it was just different. You know what I mean? My fucking, if I got hurt and fell down, my dad's like, tough it out. You're tough. Quit whining. You know what I mean? Get your ass up. Like if there wasn't blood or a fucking broken bone, they expect you to recover. Kids nowadays fall down and they're like, are you okay, honey? Gregor's. Greggy, (laughs) did you scuff your kneecap? Yeah. So anyway, so girl dad does change. You totally agree with Carl. Speaking of of um children, how's Ethan doing? Is he driving yet? Oh yeah, he's chilling, bro. And 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 seeing I think that changes too because Augustina Lyanna did that um, you know, like four or five years. She's 22, I think now. So it's been, you know, four or five, six years, but it's different when your daughter starts getting her license and she starts leaving versus your son. Yeah. Yeah, that's ah, dog just just them being out in the world like that makes me so fucking nervous driving because because dog it's not even like your kid that you'd be worried about there's so many um there's so many variables when they're out there right creepy dudes bad drivers fucking it's just like uh, you know what but that's where like in my opinion like the way i was raised and maybe you know some people might disagree it's up to us to teach them for that and it's like It's not always going to happen, but you have to watch out. Don't be pumping gas at night. If you're a girl driver or a boy driver, you know, whatever, motherfucker, fill your shit up during the day. Get your gas during the day. Don't be creeping up to the gas station at night. Don't be going to parts of town you got no business at, even during the day, let alone at night. You know what I mean? Watch out. Make sure you lock your car. Don't show your wallet. Don't pull money out when you're walking through the parking lot. Put your card and your receipt in your fucking purse or wallet before you leave the check stand so no one knows your business. Mm-hmm. Don't go to ATMs if it's dark. Don't go there by yourself. Preferably have a friend or someone with you. You know, you teach them the rules. And, like, then you just hope that fate doesn't have another, you know, plan. Mm-hmm. That's all you can do. You can't because you can't live your – bro, we, we talked about it. You get 70, 80 summers. You can't – all you can do is teach them. You, you teach them teach them everything that you learned and how you think that you can help them avoid potential situations – and and you keep them obviously out of unnecessary bad situations, but they got to go to school, they got to go to work. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, you're, right. you're right. It just and, and you know what, and I think um, I don't know. I just think that um, as a parent, like I know um, <laughs> my I remember Doug like when we started like driving and shit. You know, my parents were like, "Fuck!" Like you know, they didn't really like us going out of town and shit or driving. You know, whatever, and um. <laughs> we're 21 dog we get into a fucking head-on collision and somebody dies we're like yeah but you, you know, know what's crazy bro out of 
out of all my life experiences, you're the only dude that I really know that has a similar story. I mean, we know people that were in it, but not that turned 21, went out of town and bam, something bad happened. Like I know people that died of motorcycle accidents and shit like that, but mm -hmm. that's a unique story. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's scary because it fucking, it happens. You know what I'm saying? Like it does. So, um, it, that's just, what's crazy is that that's people get struck by lightning too. You know, it's, it's tough. Yeah, it sucks, you know. You know, so in that situation, that's where I would be concerned is if they were going with a kid I didn't like or didn't trust. I yeah. would want my kid in that situation to be behind the wheel and trust him that I did a good enough job raising my kid that they're going to use good judgment. And and maybe they won't, you know what I mean? But again, you, you can't. It's a tough one. Because here's another thing, though. That experience, obviously, you're going to feel a different way about that situation than I am because obviously you got jacked up. People in the car got jacked up. And like you said, someone lost their life. So I can't even for a minute even try to say that I get it because unless you've been through something like that, bro, I mean, that's tough. So I, I can't compare to that for sure. Yeah. I, I do know, though, when you're a kid, especially with you being dead of the year, going 95 places in 24 hours, it'll definitely help out because then maybe you can meet her there or she can meet you guys at the gym or you know what I mean? So I think that once you are involved for so many years and you're the taxi guy for so long, you, you start to not only do you encourage their independence and their development into a, a young adult, um, it also kind of frees you up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? And um, I think Covino kind of mentioned that when, um, you know, at, har at first it was real hard when, when, you know, they're going through the divorce and shit, or whatever, but then um, he now, if Mel it's a week that Melody's not with them, you know, then freaking, um, he has kind of a chill weekend or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, so you kind of get used to it and, and kind of just, you know, I'm sure at first it was like, not only does he miss her, but is she okay? And then as time goes on, you kind of have to just, you know, trust the values and shit that you instilled in them and hope, you know, pray for the best, you know? And look at his relationship with her. He's tied. They're super close. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. It is. No, it is. And, and, and that's how, that's how I am with my daughter. So, I mean, I, you know, I'm like, yeah, man, those, those are great relationships to have for sure. And again, when you're that close to your daughter, yeah, brother, a little more precious than a, than a boy would be, I promise. Because even if you were that close to your son, it, it's not the same. Hey, I have a, a kind of a change of topic question, but yo, <laughs> I, I'd have to think about this. So I'm going to ask you while I'm thinking of my answer, but do you have, is there anything that you collect or, um, or like <laughs> stamps, coins, um, shoes? I mean, um what is there something and if you do are you collecting it you know in hopes of of flipping the shit one day? i would only collect something for that reason yeah okay cool. yeah because because their money's good right now they're giving you four and a half five percent on cds and high yield savings and five and a half percent on some of those cds and i'm not putting in any money that just sits if i'm buying something it's because i think it's going to appreciate in value at some point and um, and I can sell it later. So yes, I've got about four pairs of brand new Jordans that I've just bought. I've been on that sneaker app, so I got those bread four Jordans. Um, I got those. I told you those Kobe. You seen my shoes when you were here. So I've been buying those, trying to stock them away and keep them in the box with the wrap and everything. Um, I buy gold. You know, sometimes when I got extra money, I'll go and buy a roll of silver American Eagle Lady, Lady Liberties. Am I a coin collector? No, but I know that. The more we use silver, they're not getting any more of it. I mean, the earth only has so much, so it's only going to go up in value. So I try to do things that I can cash out later with more money than I started with as an exit strategy. So, yeah, I like I like gold. I like uh, any American Eagle, Lady Liberty, platinum coins, gold coins, silver coins, palladium coins, uh, Bitcoin, shoes, um, Shit hey, like that. I don't know if you want to um, talk or if you want to play a, a song or something. I, I need to um, step out for a second real quick. Okay. Yeah, I'll play a song. If people got some put stuff to put in there, yeah, it's all good. Put some in the chat. Let's get something going. This is Larry June. Why? <laughs> Yeah, Rich, if you're listening, we didn't mean this to be the bag on Rich show. We love you. Oh. Took the stickers off the GT. Yeah. First nigga whipping this. The Pan American cool, but I don't think that they can fuck with this. Off top, press the button, then I watch my spoiler. Your dad has to be the one doing nitty gritty. 
That was tough. I didn't have to have the birth control talk because uh, I was with my, my one of my exes at the time, so she did because that's when that happened. But as a single dad, yes, the cycle started, and I had to figure that out on my own. Um, my mom was never a tampon lady, and she's a super hardcore Christian. And my daughter, so I had her go on YouTube with the Playtex commercials, and yeah, yeah. It was that was a rough one. So had a couple tough moments. So how did that talk go with your dad, Crystal? Yeah. If a nigga don't like me, he ain't him so. Niggas don't need no money, they need help. If I say fuck your shit, that's how I flow. And if you're in your feelings about it, I'm like, well, uh -oh. back up out of my space. I need a breather. I don't really like no niggas should meet either. If I lose, I be damned. I'm like a fever. It to be hot, what happened? They in a freezer. Here where I'm from, put in that so me from being like Cody and that so beef. Nothing standing about this work, no S O P. Okay. Yeah, I had my daughter since she was four. Water in the trout. You don't know if you got heart until you down for the count. You don't know if you a boss until you help a nigga out. You ain't making out that mud till you help your niggas out. 2021, sleeping on my mama couch. 27 years young, living at my mama house. Shit, change that can count. I can help my mama out. All these fucking renovations gonna bump my mama. Larry June. Uh oh, we got some Jerry Larry June requests. We find it. We got a uh, Larry June request. I can't turn that one down. If a nigga don't like me, he hate them so. Niggas don't need no money, they need help. If I say fuck your shit, that's how I felt. And then Larry, what song is it? About it, I'm like, well, keep calling. So, just Larry June, just keep calling. So, keep calling. Uh huh. So, All right, let's listen to that. So, Larry June, keep calling. Where are we at, Larry June? Keep calling. Oh, there it is. All that different playing the stock won't go far, and I just did a cool tour in the last go. Entertaining eyes, no, I heard her no watch. Never heard of this watch, but I still got a cop. I just touched that door, surprise party for pops. Back in the field, you know, it's more to fly. I ain't even checking the scoreboard. I stop with the score. Double up on this world tour and then drop again. Why are you looking for a block to spin? So that must be the other cat. Blast, you can't box me in. I'm a sucker for the end. That's yeah, where you're doing. Um, but a lot of blasts. I'm still hitting. Flawless. I could find it. Let me find it. You did me wrong. I'm done with you. 10,000 blows. Yeah. I'm thumbing through. Picking up my shit. And it's been tight. Fly out the way. Secret location. Kiss on the lips right before breakfast. Cop and back, please, boy, you with the extras. Rose, gold, peace, and the diamond special. Put off in the porch, playing my confession. I just played a game. All right, Larry June. There we go, Larry June. LJ. Yes, keep him calling. Keep him calling. Oh, keep calling. That's what he said. Mm hmm. Uh, what you got, D? Let me see. Um, uh, Notes, 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 notes. Let me see. Ask doctor about penis reduction. No, let me see. Um, best ethnic cuisine. Oh, what about this, Doc? There was a uh, there was a question that Rich posed where he said, um, they were talking about LB and um how you know he he hasn't made it in the industry. So okay. they were talking about how long do you give before, you know, you give up on your dreams? Is it, you know, you've been doing it 25, 30 years, you kick back or what? Or I don't know. I mean, would you ready to admit that you failed? I mean, you never, you never fail if you don't quit. So if you're done and it's not, it's, it, it has to not be worth it to you anymore. It, the fight, you, you have to really be not determined. You might, you have to really believe because at that point you really believe you're not going to make it or why would you quit? Yeah. 
you know? And so I, I don't know. I can't tell one when they should be done or what they should or shouldn't do. But I mean, if you don't quit, you don't, you don't lose if you don't quit. Yeah. I think it's a little different when, um, when it it's your, um, something that, that he's trying to make a living at or whatever, you know? So if he's not, it's not paying the bills, I think, um, maybe he could do something to supplement it if he's that, you know, um, because Rich was saying, um, oh, he could go and be a, a like a finance guy or something or whatever. But right. I just I'm like, what if that's not what LB wants, you know, and it sucks if he's not making the money he needs to to survive and he has to get something to supplement it. But I mean, well, that and that's that's different. So I don't I don't think that. I don't, I, okay. So you know me, I'm a man of many, many hustles. So I don't think you should live broke and, and put all your faith into one dream. I think at some point you're not getting the results from the work you're putting in. I don't think you should withdraw completely, but you absolutely have to figure out something to pay your bills at the same time. So many people work two jobs and, and some people even work three jobs. So you can still live your dream, but you also have to be able to accept when it's not paying your bills and you have to do something else to pay those bills. That doesn't mean you have to give up on your dream. That just means that until it starts paying your, look at us. We've been doing the show now for a few years. I mean, so uh, what, you know, what do you want to do? Is it paying all the bills yet? No, but it could, all of the bills. you know, it could one day. And so it's like, again, are you ready to give up on your dream? I don't know. I, I think either you have to be able to shuffle around and have, and, and realize that you also, number one, you separate a dream from realistic income. OK, because just because something in the future can provide income, you have to figure shit out if it currently isn't and you need it to survive. Yeah. I uh, fucking I'm Uber, DoorDash, like, something. You said, like you said, we're doing this. We've been doing this for a few years together, whatever, whatever. I'm like, dog, I fucking this is this. Honestly, shit like this, the editing and shit and, uh, you know, whatever. I love all of this shit. Right. So you could say this is my dream, right? To do shit like this, whatever, whatever, full time. Um, I'm I feel blessed that we have people that you know get to you know that like to chime in. You that you're there every week, and we get to record, and there's no bullshit. I, you know, I'm very I'm very grateful. Um, one day if it could pay the bills, that'd be dope. You know what I'm saying? But for now, I'm like you know I'm I I mean be between you know my family and and work. You know, I have very little time for this, but but this is something that I love so much that I make time for it. And people say, oh, yeah, I would do this for free. We actually pretty much do. So so that's how, you know, we really dig it because we spent dog. There, there's people don't know, but there's you know, we have our we have our our after show, you know, um, meetings or whatever. And we're talk we're bullshitting, you know, talking about ideas and what we could do to do this and and could we start doing more of these and this and 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 that shit dog that we're fucking we could be doing other shit and putting our energy into other shit but this is shit that we dig that'd be right how dope would that be dog just to be like yeah we make fucking whatever and honestly dog if i if i could do this shit making um a living, not even I wouldn't need fucking Rolexes and shit but just a I would I would but you but again cut. You know? You're making my point, though. You're doing it for the right reason. You're not being unrealistic to saying, hey, something that I love to do has to pay my bills. You're like, I can find a way to pay my bills and still do what I love to do. And who knows? I mean, we got our first sponsor. You heard Juan Venado. I mean, that was nice. And so it's only up from here. And uh, and so with that being said, you know, we, we, we might get paid in the future. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? But you have to be realistic about where you're at. And so I think, you know, he just maybe needs to outsource some more work. Maybe he has to realize that right now he's not getting enough jobs mixing and editing and creative video and content. Maybe he does have to go be a blackjack dealer or get his barber license and learn how to cut hair. I fuck, I'm gonna go get my barber license. I think it's 12 G's it's 32 hours a week for nine months. And then really you can cut hair two an hour. I see people do two an hour all day. And I see the people from Fresno, they do three or four an hour and you're getting 35 bucks a cut. Shit, you could pay me 70 bucks an hour for a second time job, part time job, mm -hmm. you know, but that's how my brain works. And I realize that's not how everyone else's brain works, but why not keep pursuing what he's pursuing? Go get his barber license and be the fucking mobile barber or I do it out of his house or I don't fucking know. But 
don't give up on your dream unless you're just over it. Hey, um, Ju says, I wish I knew how to edit and stuff. Are you talking about like audio, video, music, uh, fucking podcasts, uh, TikTok clips? Like, what are you talking about? Because what I'm thinking is, Doc, to gain some more of our hours and shit on TikTok live and shit. I'll fucking, I'll, I don't give a fuck. I'll jump on and do a video where I'm showing people how to edit and shit, you know, just so we can get them hours in. So if there's something. You're just adjusting volumes. You just, there, you know what, Juice, check it out. I'll tell you how to edit. There's a, ad, there's a, a free app out there and it's called Band Lab. And you can import music. You can go and get uh, instrumental beats off the internet. If you Google, you know, free rap beats, you can get you can go and upload that Juan Venado, John Deere commercial, right? And over rat, that's all it is. So that was made with Band Lab. You know, I was supposed to tell you that because we got paid a handsome sum for that commercial. But that was made with Band Lab, and that was free, and that was stuff I all did, and it took me about five minutes. And, and you can mess around on there. There's volume controls. It'll split. Like, if you do one long wavelength of audio, you can split it and chop out parts and redo it and you just got to, whatever your deal is, I don't know if you smoke weed or drink or whatever your vice is, do it and start messing with that app. It's called Band Lab and you'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say what's up to Lisa because she joined us. Um, I did see Lisa. What's up, Lisa? Ago, and I haven't said hello. So Lisa, we appreciate you um, joining us because we're hey, late where you're at. But um, she does say barbers have to pay um, chair rent or have clients at their home. Maybe the mobile um, barber is a good idea. Well, yeah. think about it, bro. I drive for a living. You get to write off every mile. Federal, you get 64 cents a mile right now. So think about that. For every thousand miles you drive, you get a $640 credit on your taxes. Or if you lease the vehicle, you get to write the whole thing off, the whole lease payment. So you can't claim the miles in, but there's write-offs. So if, yeah, if you got like a used, you know, you don't even necessarily need a Sprinter van unless you were busting out your own chair. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you could just even go on a Honda, like a pilot or a forerunner or something. If you just had, you know, your barber equipment. Yeah. Well, I'll think about it. Like there's some dude I saw on TikTok and that's what he does. He, I think he is called the mobile barber. I think that's his shit. And he mobs around or, oh no, no, no. I think he's called nature's barber and he just does the shits outside. He's his fucking yeah. natural sunlight dog. You can't get better sunlight, better light than that. Right. You know, when you're and, getting a haircut, you're getting a haircut. Light is essential. Do that shit outside, dog. You're good. Well, and if you go all fancy, like I was thinking about buying a new work truck myself, and it's about a thousand bucks a month. So if you go all fancy and get a Sprinter van and you put a chair in there and lights and whatnot, I would probably charge barbershop prices, if not even maybe more, because I'm bringing the total experience to you. But like if you're just going and, you know, you're sitting at their kitchen table and you're just going to sweep up the hair when you're done and, you know, you do a shave or you do whatever, you still provide like a full salon but at someone else's place or maybe even in your home then maybe you're a little bit cheaper you know what i'm saying dog, that, that, how fucking badass would that be to get like a sprinter van dog and fucking boom you're welcome you for the idea and fucking it just looks like a fucking barber shop dog that bro you can even put they have two chairs in there with a little sink on the back so in case you want to give them a little shampoo do the hot shave with the blade bro oh you could just pull up you get 40 50 bucks for a shave if you came to someone's work on their lunch hour yeah dog that'd be think if you just pull it up to to food max and shit max comes outside you cut him up real quick before he goes back inside <laughs> he can get some DoorDash delivered while he's getting cut ah Dog, and if you have a sprinter van and you pull up to Vallarta, you could fit like 25, 30 of those motherfuckers in there and get haircuts. That's what and I'm saying, have man. Same stupid haircut that's like kind of like a little bully looking. Oh, uh, Edgar or the or the Caesar? Dog, you could just go by. Do you, which one's the one with the longer hair? The, Caesar? the Caesar's the guy I played you that was complaining about the drivers. He has about four or five different personalities on that website. And one's like a white Eminem gangster guy from Detroit. And he does the Caesar where he pulls all his fucking bangs forward. And then he cuts them right above his fucking in the middle of his forehead. I just, that's I just a, had an idea. What's that? No, I'm just thinking of, of like TikToks and shit or whatever. Uh -huh. um, what I've been seeing that are fucking like, I'm like, dog, these are fucking stupid, but we could like, I could check out, like I told you, I started listening to that dude, that Mexican OT. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I was like he, he's pretty cool, you know? Yeah. But, um, But there's a lot of songs I haven't heard because I just heard him um, like on Joe Rogan last week or some shit. I'm like, oh, I'll check him out. Um, right. Like, like we, I, there could be like live listens or whatever, you know, or whatever. And, and reaction videos type of shit. And I know it's been a thing forever, but I was just thinking, we haven't done none of those. We could fucking put on a song or some shit and do live reaction. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, absolutely. 
So um, just but Le- Le- oh oh, you know what though? What what were you gonna say? Well, Lisa says though people pay a premium, dude. You could probably get fifty bucks a haircut if you had that damn Sprinter van. You know, what? and guess what? That shit only goes up. And and the good thing about inflation is, is think about it before COVID. I wasn't paying more than 20, 25 bucks a haircut. COVID happens. Those bastards went up to 30, 35 and some are 40. The price only goes up. Once you buy the van and the equipment, you're locked into the price that the haircuts were then. If haircuts go up, that's just better for you. Yeah. Um, you, you know what I mean? Like that's a skill where people are going to continue to pay you more and more for your service. And if you provide a custom experience, ain't no AI or machine going to get rid of the custom experience. They're just not. Mm-hmm. Um, there was there was a thought that crossed my mind. I fucking forgot, dog. Um, but we could. I mean, we could wrap it up. I I, I lost my train of thought, but we fucking we can always jump on again if we need to. Okay, cool. That's cool with me. All yep. right. Well, after show, but later. Thank you. Number 235. Thank you guys. For Everybody. Us. If you missed part of it, like Lisa did, go back and watch the replay. Get those replays up. And I can't believe they found Kate. After show, Me but either. Later, episode number 235. Send videos to the link. Get the link from Daniel, the share folder. Yeah. If you have an iPhone, hit us up for the link. Or, or text us. 928-235-5285. Baseline Trey. Good night, everybody. Peace. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Andrew. Lisa. Picture an old school cigarette curl in the Sprinter van. <laughs> That's great.